Hey hello everyone and welcome to this new Flutter video. In this we're going to be taking a look at top 10 widgets for Flutter developers. Well I'm not going to take into account widgets such as columns, rows, container, text and all these widgets. I'm going to be taking a look at other widgets that we use in our daily apps. I hope this video will help out newer Flutter developers and other developers in general. So let's get started. Okay, so talking about safe area, let's say we have an app in which we have this app bar and a bottom list view. So we can click on the items of list view and it's all, go it's all going fine. So in some cases you don't really need this app bar. You have to create your own custom container containing some buttons and the title uh, to have customized animations and so on. So you don't really need this app bar in that case. So what will happen is when you remove this app bar and run the app again, you'll see that the container moves into the status bar. So for example, let me just change the color of the container. Let me just name it uh, color.deeporange. Colors.deeporange. And when I save the app and run, you can see that the container is moving into the status bar. So uh, in such cases, what you can do is you can wrap your scaffold, the whole activity container, inside of a safe area so when you save the app and run it again, you can see that the container has, has moved below the status bar and it's in its own area. So a safe area is really a nice widget which, which tells your activity, which tells your layout, uh, it, which is the safest area for it to lay out its elements. For example, in some screens nowadays, you can see that the, that the screens are curved on the sides or you have a notch or something on the screen. So uh, it's, it is not a good idea to display your contents behind the notch. Okay? So the safe area will save your activity or your layout from that uh, whole mess and will give you a clean, nice layout. Okay, so uh, if you use Flutter, you know if you want to arrange your elements in a vertical fashion, you use column, and for horizontal fashion, you use row. So uh, in this particular case, let's say I have three buttons and I want to display them in a row, it works fine. And uh, I know each button is going to take this much space and they're laid out perfectly. Let's say we have a situation in which the uh, buttons need to display some sort of categories and the data has to come from the internet and we don't really know how much categories we're going to display so there are going to be more buttons but we can't really use row for that uh, because let's say if I add another button here let's say I add button 4 and my screen does not have enough space let's say I save this and okay so you have seen this or um, yellow bar before and it says that there is not enough space to display the fourth button so this is a problem Okay, so I, what I wanted was, I want this button, the fourth button, to come below the other three buttons. It, I want it to wrap to the other space. So here, here is what, why the wrap widget comes handy. And what I'll do is, I'll just replace the row with a wrap. Okay, so now you can see that the fourth button is shifted down to the application, and you don't have to do anything extra, but add a wrap widget instead of using row. Okay, so wrap widget also has another property that is called direction. Uh, so by the direction you can pass if you want to display your elements in a horizontal or a vertical fashion, just like rows and columns, but here it's more flexible. And in the direction you can pass axis dot uh, horizontal, so it won't change anything because we already have a horizontal fashion. And if I do here a vertical, so when I save this, you can see that the, all the elements are displayed in a vertical fashion, like a column. And uh, if there is no more space, the elements will wrap themselves up and you'll have a nice flexible layout. Okay, so I have a simple app here in which I have a text view in center of a container. So what I want to do is I want to format the text in some way. I want to keep retro portal as it is and I want to make studio bold with a red color. So the first thing that comes into mind is we can create a column and add two text views to it. But that doesn't seem so interesting. So we'll be using a rich text widget here. Okay, so for adding rich text, I'm just going to add rich text here rich text that is a widget provided to you by Flutter and in the text what I'm going to do is I'm not going to pass text directly I'm going to add a text span and what uh, 
text to span is it takes a text which I'll be passing as retro portal studio retro portal studio I'll just add retro portal here because for the studio I'll be adding another text span so let's add style to it and the text span also takes a children property in which we can pass other text spans also so here what I can do is I can also add another text span in here we'll be passing studio as a text and also a space before it studio and for the style uh, I'm gonna copy the style here let me just copy it and paste it here okay and I also need to pass text here let's say text okay and in the style here I'm gonna pass font weight I'm gonna keep it font weight dot bold and a color of colors dot red so when we run the app again you can see that the retro portal is gone only because I can pass color colors dot colors dot black let me just run the app again and you can see that we have retro portal studio just the way we intended to be okay so I have an app with an image at its center what I want to achieve is that I want to round off the uh, edges of the image because they're right now they're too sharp for my taste so what we can do how we can achieve this thing is we can wrap the image with a clip or rectangle widget okay so I'll just wrap the image with a clip or rect and what a clip or rect takes is a border radius uh, radius to it and you can see that uh, the image in the widget is rounded off so you can also use clip or rect with any other widget at its, as, uh, as its child you don't really use to use image all the time I can just uh, cut off the image and I can pass in a container and when I hit hot reload you can see that uh, the container is also rounded off at, at its edges by the clip or rect so basically clip or rect takes an element as a child and it clips their edges to by the border radius that you pass it as an argument okay so media query is really a nice tool given to you by flutter sdk it tells us in-depth details regarding the size the width the brightness and all sorts of details regarding the device that on which your app is running so how to use media query so for media query you need uh, you need to add media query here and you need to call off context you need to pass in the context so you will have to call this method this function in a build method to get the context directly or pass it through uh, some functions or so and from this you can get the size from which you can get the width and height of the image there are a lot more properties in the size itself and from the media query you can also check orientation padding and uh, there are also options for brightness platform brightness from which you can get the brightness details also so right now I have a simple app in which I have two containers in a column which is given to us by this function get layout elements it gives us a list of widgets and I have two columns which are a uh, child of flexible widgets with a flex of five so they'll be taking half of whatever the container they're in so uh, right now I have a single column which is getting this get layout elements as its children okay so the app is looking nice but the problem comes when I rotate the device okay so let me just rotate the device now and you can see that uh, what I wanted from this is I wanted one container to be on the left hand side and another to be on the right hand side okay so when I rotate the device back each element comes into its original position so how can we achieve that responsiveness so the one way is that we can check the orientation of the device using the media query so I will do that here I'll get orientation I'll name it orientation from media query dot off context and from here I'll get the orientation simple as that and what we'll need to do here is I'll just cut this function I'll just remove the column here and instead of this I'll be using a ternary operator I'll just check for orientation and let's check if it is equal to orientation dot portrait if it is portrait then what we're gonna do is we're gonna return a column or if it is not portrait then we're gonna pass a row and just format the code again and run the code on the app 
So it's looking fine in the portrait mode. Let's just shift it to the other orientation. And you can see that I have one container on the left and other on the right. So you can see how you can achieve more responsiveness in your app using just the media query widget. And you don't have to go uh, to layout builder for each and every time. Okay, so let's say that we have an app that loads data from the internet or from the database or from the assets of the app. So uh, this process takes time. You have to get connected to the internet and take the data and then process the data and then display it on the device. So uh, you need some sort of uh, technique in which you can uh, display something else on the screen, for example, a circular loading sign to show the user that the data is being loaded. And when the data is there and you have it ready to go, you can then show the list view or any other widget to show the data to the user. So uh, you need to manage this process and this is exactly what Future Builder helps us with. Okay, so let's say we have a simple app that you have something, uh, some kind of JSON in your assets and you, didn't ne you need to load that into your application. So in case of Dart, that will return you a future. That means uh, it will try to get the assets and get the file and then decode that and give you the result. So this will take some, uh, take some time and it will give you a result in the future. Okay, so how Future Builder will fit into this is when in the container here, we'll add a Future Builder, Future Builder, and in the Future Builder, it will take a future. That is the get context function that is right up here. And along with this, it will take a builder, which will give us the context and the snapshot. So basically what the snapshot is, it's, it's going to be the list of contexts that is being returned by the future. Okay. So in here, we can check if the snapshot dot has data, then we can return a list view or else we can return a circular progress indicator or else we're going to be returned with a list view. And if the snapshot has the data, we're going to take the data from the snapshot and then create a list from that. And if there is no data, then we're going to show a circular progress indicator in the center of the app. So let's see how it looks in the app. And uh, yeah, it's going to look fine. I'm just going to restart the app. And yeah, it's going to load in the instant because it's in the assets, but it's nice to have a future builder. So Flexible is another widget that is given to you by Flutter SDK to make your apps more responsive. So let's say I have an app here in which I have three containers in a single column. I've given a height of 200 to each of the container. So they're taking equal height in a single column. What I want to achieve is that I want to give the first container 10% of the height, the second container 50% of the height, and the third container 40% of the height of the screen. So there can be a way we can use media query to get the height of the screen and then divide the height accordingly. But that is not going to be more responsive in nature. So we can instead use a simple widget called flexible. What we have to do is we have to wrap the first container in a flexible widget and give it a flex property of one. And we have to do same thing for the other two widgets and remove the height. So now none of the container is having its own height. Instead, they're getting their height by the flexible widget that is covering each of the container. So the reason why I gave it a flex of one and a flex of five and a flex of four is because the flutter actually takes the total of all the flexes that are in a single column or a row. So the point here is the total of the flex is 10. That is one plus five plus four. And the first flex is going to take 10% of the total height. The second flex is going to take five by 10, that is half, that is 50% of the total height. And the third is going to take 40% of the total height. So if I run the app now, you can see that each of the column, each of the container is divided according to the flex property that we gave it using the flexible widget. Okay, so right now you can see that I have a simple button of hello world in the center of my container. So what I want to do is I want to give a fixed width and a fixed height to this button. So how can I achieve that? So for achieving this simple thing, what I can do is I can wrap my button with a sized box. 
So a size box is a widget that is given to you by Flutter SDK to which you can give a width and a height. So let's say I give it a width of 200 and a height of 70. And when I hot reload the app, you can see that the button has taken the height and width of the sized box. So size box is basically used to give a perfect width and height to its child element. Okay, so let's say you want the button to take the exact width of the container. So in this case, what you will do is you'll change the width of the sized box to double dot infinity. And when you refresh the app, you can see that the button has taken the width of the container element. And if you want to add double dot infinity for both width and height, what you can do instead is remove both these properties and add expanded to the sized box. And the sized box will take the width and height of its container element, that is the container, and will give the same width and height to its child element. So the align property helps us in aligning a single widget into its parent widget. Let's say we have a container here in which we have a single text that says hello. And what we want to do is we want to align this hello to the bottom right corner. So what we can do is we can wrap this text widget with the new align widget and give it an alignment of alignment alignment dot bottom right and refresh the page and you can see that the text has come down to the bottom right corner of the container. Okay, so these are the widgets that I think every Flutter developer should know. And for more details, you can always visit widget catalog at flutter.dev. And for more Flutter tutorials, don't forget to visit my channel, Retro Portal Studio, and check out the latest Flutter development videos. And if you like the video, do hit the like button and the subscribe button. It helps a lot. And uh, thank you for your support. See you next time. Peace.